Good morning. Well, I'm sorry. Good evening. I'm used to morning for the Facebook. I'm still getting used to the evenings. Welcome to tonight's Facebook Live. This is our series for October, our Wednesday nights at 6 p.m. We will be talking about organizing after loss and how to deal with some of those things when you're grieving and the process after that event. How to just go through the things and move forward and deal with all that comes with it. I'm Susanna Kay. I'm organized. I'm a professional organizer and I'm the owner of Spark Organizing. You can find me at sparkorganizing.com. I'm also a public speaker and this is one of my favorite topics. I absolutely love this topic because it touches right at the heart of what I enjoy the most, what I'm passionate about, which is helping primarily women to move forward in their lives, especially by gaining control of their space. That's what lights me on fire. And dealing with people who've been through some type of trauma or grief just is an amazing blessing to be part of that. And there's a unique way to deal with it. It's not like any other organizing that you will find. So I love to talk about this uh, because very few organizers truly understand it. Um, I started with speaking about this recently. Uh, I guess I spoke about it a while ago, but a speech recently to the Modern Widows Club in Orlando made me think about doing this Facebook Live series because I just wanted to share the message with more people than I could touch in just one single meeting. And there were so many questions and so many people who wanted to find out more and get more information. So I decided to create the Facebook Live in order to get to more people about this. And it all started from the Modern Widows Club meeting. So if you are a widow, then that's a great group to look into. If you just do a search of Modern Widows Club, it's, I believe, nationwide now, and it's an amazing support group of these powerful women. Um, and like I said, it fits my passion just to help women to move forward and gain control again. Help men as well, but my main love and who I speak to the most are women. So there's a structure to this Facebook Live. There will be four parts. This goes on every Wednesday evening at 6 p.m. throughout October of 2017. And tonight we will cover a bit more about your journey and what that means as far as cleaning out your space and processing some of these items from the very beginning of the process when things are still super raw and painful um, and how that relates to you and your emotions with it. And then we'll go a little bit into the structure of how to tackle some of these things. After that will come the steps. So next week we'll talk even more in depth about the steps that I briefly covered during this one. Final, uh, the third week we will talk about reframing your thinking, some of those thoughts that get in our way of letting go or the things that we struggle with the most. As far as our thinking, we will talk about that in week three. And then in week four, we will talk about making decisions, the real nitty gritty of it. It's throughout the whole course, but the fourth week, we will talk about not only making the decisions, but how to honor those things that we do keep and really create a purpose for these things. So that's the structure of these four weeks. Like I mentioned, today is about your journey, and it will be every Wednesday at 6 p.m. throughout October. Please, throughout this, ask questions, leave comments. I love to hear feedback. Um, if you pop on, feel free to say hello so that I know that you're there and that we can have a conversation rather than me just talking to the air, which is really weird with Facebook Live. It feels like you're talking to the air sometimes. So I'd love to hear from you, even if it's just a hi, a thumbs up, a couple hearts and likes, whatever you do to show me that you're there and interested in what I'm saying. But feel free to comment because the comments in these conversations are what spark the true meat of things sometimes. During the Modern Widows Club meeting, it was absolutely fantastic to hear some of the stories from people who've been through it and maybe are further along in the process or who are struggling with something in particular. So I could address that in particular along with what I already planned to talk about. Um, and then, like I said, this is the first video. There aren't any past videos to watch. As you move along through the course, I'll encourage you to review some of these too. So today, like I mentioned, it's about your journey. And it is absolutely normal for things to absolutely fall apart when you go through some major trauma. That is so normal and necessary 
because there are other things that are more important than your things around you in your house to deal with when things are right in the meat of it or right afterwards. Um, our brains can only handle so much and the dishes sometimes aren't one of them or the pile of laundry. It's not that important at the time. So it is absolutely normal. Do not feel bad about if things fall apart around you for a while. That's supposed to happen and it's part of the process and it's necessary. So after that initial trauma happens, after the loss, it takes a little while of just living in the chaos to where, um, and you'll know it, you'll feel it, to where the first need to take a step forward happens. And until that need happens or until um, it's causing true problems, sometimes it's okay to just be in the chaos for a little bit. But once that gut starts to tell you that it's time to process some of these things and gain a little bit more control, then that's when decluttering really comes in. Because our first step to regaining control and healing is usually within our space. It's a very emotional thing, decluttering. It uncovers all of that stuff that we've been hiding. So not only did we have other things to deal with right after the trauma, but right after the trauma, we're also covering, physically covering up a lot of the emotions that are going on within us or physically avoiding them by not dealing with them, which is necessary for a while. But once your gut tells you that you need to be moving forward, then that is the time when you should start to consider some of these steps. And the first step, like I said, is simply decluttering, um, regaining control of your space, your surroundings. Once we can regain control, that's when we can start to uncover that next layer of emotions. Now, this is really scary because nobody wants to uncover those emotions that they just took so long burying and that they wanted to keep hidden and that they covered up so nicely. <laughs> it's not something that we look forward to. Um, so I say usually don't do this alone. Try to find a friend, a support group, uh, organizer, if it's something that you don't want somebody pers that you personally know, you're somebody from church, just make sure that you've got that support group around you because as you declutter, these emotions do come up and it's healthy for them to come up, but it's also good to have that safety net. So the reason I called this one your journey is because this is particular to you. There is no right way to do this. There's no should. If somebody says should, immediately ignore it. <laughs> I, I will not be telling you what you should do. Everybody's journey is different. Everybody processes grief and loss differently. And that's good and it's okay, so follow your heart. Throughout this course, what I'm going to be telling you about, um, throughout this, I guess, series, not course, but what I'll be talking about, feel free to take the parts that resonate with you and leave the rest because those might not be meant for you, but those tidbits that actually resonate and really feel uh, right to you and right in your heart, those are the ones that are meant for you. So none of this is a should or a step-by-step -step how to that you must adhere to. Always follow your own heart in your own time and it will be a slow process and it should be a slow process. Um, so like I said, take what you need out of tonight, rewatch these, at different stages of your healing. Because this video tonight will mean something to you right now, especially if you're early on in the process, it'll mean one thing to you. If you watch this again in six months, you will have different takeaways. And it is going to mean something different because mentally and emotionally you are at a different place. So rewatch these at a later time, any type of books that you have or conversations that you have with people have those again, read those again, because each time it's like an onion, there's a layer that comes off. And then you process what you can at the time and that level that you can. And then once you've taken off that layer, then you're ready for the next layer. But everything that did not apply to the layer that you're on, you don't, it doesn't keep in your head. So you need to keep listening to these again in order to keep that growth cycle. So it's okay if not all of this is where you're at right now. Take what's for right now and then rewatch these later because there will be some things that will resonate much more with you then as well. So these are useful more than once. Um, and also if anybody ever pushes you 
saying that you should be doing this or pushes you to move faster then you're ready to move with letting go of things in particular uh, I say just tell them that this is your process this is how you're doing it and this is how you're dealing with it at the moment and um, just that you're not ready and it's okay to not be ready some people are ready right away some people need to regain that control after one week and they're ready to go through items a week afterwards some people that's a year later and that's good because that's their journey so do it on your own timeline as long as not hurting anything or hurting anybody take your time and do it the right way as your gut tells you but that being said listen to your gut if you're getting that inkling and you look at you know that box in the closet and that box that never bothered you too much before is suddenly nagging at you, that is your heart saying that now is the time for the next layer. So listen to yourself as well and do it on your time. Like I mentioned, organizing after trauma helps by uncovering a lot of those emotions that we have covered up with physical things and it allows us to do that first step of healing. This is a great thing to do if you're also in counseling Want to do it with your counselor they don't have to be here but involve them in the process of what type of emotions come up as you go through some of these things it's a beautiful way to really get to the meat of some of what you're feeling and get some help in that way like I said don't do it alone also um, organizing uh, after any sort of trauma whether it's an illness it's a loss of somebody if it is a cha major life change, a divorce, a move that you did not want, a job loss. Reorganizing helps you redefine the new current roles. And when we're talking about somebody that you lost, that includes their role in your life. So as you're organizing, one of those layers is going to be defining where they fit in your life in this new way. They still play an important part in your life, but they are now there in a different way. And by reorganizing and gaining control of your space, you are also defining how they are participating in your life. And it's good. And at each stage, it will be different. So what happens and what works for you when you first start to organize after loss will not be the same thing two years down the line or 10 years down the line. It will be very different because these people now have a different role in your life. So um, it helps redefine the roles that they play in your life even when they're not here and the new roles that you have in your life, your new plans, your new goals and dreams. So it can be really emotional because some of these new things that you need to make space for happen. And you can't make space for new things when the old things are still in the way. So clearing out some space for new things to happen, whether that's travel or a move or a new job or a new adventure, new friends, new hobbies, um, a new partner in your life, all of these things require the space to be them there for you to allow that in. So organizing also helps create that space. Not just this physical space, but once you make the physical space more open, the mental space opens up as well. There are a number of studies simply about um, if you're looking for a new partner, if you sleep on only one side of the bed, leaving space for another person to be there, then mentally that does it kind of flips a switch in your head, allowing that space and keeping you more open to meeting that person. And they've done studies and found that people who do that actually do meet somebody sooner than somebody who is not leaving space in their home. The same with a closet or something like that. <laughs> and yes, Ruth, clearing out space on your computer, that might open up for new ideas, new projects, and just help you feel more in control of your computer and your digital world. Even on the computer though, the act of clearing out mentally opens us up with more space for new things to happen. By taking care of things at home, it might open up this ability to travel because now you feel like things are settled here and now you can go out without worrying about that so much. So organizing gives you space for new and it also just helps you feel more in control. And that is a lot of times one of the major things that we need after a trauma. Once we want to recover, we desperately need to feel a sense of control again, don't we? <laughs> 
It's because your life is spiraled absolutely downhill. So some of the process that I'm going to talk about, I'll talk about it much more in depth next week on Wednesday, but here is the basic process that I use with people as they're going through after a trauma or a major life change. Um, it's very similar to the regular organizing process for somebody who's simply overwhelmed, but there are some unique differences that I'll talk about. So first off, um, you assess. And this is a little bit different than regular organizing. In regular organizing, you would assess your space and see what's making you happy and sad and helping you out, but in a less emotional way. It's more of a functionality or a simple feeling of joy and happiness and contentment or not. Now, after a loss, when you're assessing, you are assessing which things are bringing you joy, just like in organizing, but also which things you still need to be there and which things you feel that first tinge in your heart of that you kind of want to deal with. So if there's a bookshelf of old yearbooks, for example, and you've been holding on to them forever from your late husband and you're looking around your room and you're assessing, then as you look at things, your gut will be telling you the things that you need to look at a little harder. So as you're looking across the room and looking at item by item, a lot of times when you come across those yearbooks, that's when all of a sudden you're going to, you know, your brain starts to do the whole, I should, I should get rid of that. I should, da -da, or your, your heart's not quite as happy. It's kind of, there's this feeling of guilt and things like that that go along with it. So during this assessment, whether you're pulling out drawers and pulling things out of drawers or eyeballing the room, you're looking for what makes you happy in the room because those are the things that you want to honor and highlight and that are not going to go anywhere. They should be actually out in the open for you to be able to see. You should see what, um, what holds you back, what is keeping you from moving forward, whether it is the box of his things that's nagging at you that you just know that you should go through and you just haven't yet. And also feel what emotions come up. So unlike regular organizing, there will be a lot more that surprising emotions come up. Sometimes um, we can feel bad because even emotions like anger can come up or frustration or um, jealousy or all of these emotions that just don't seem like what we should feel, but they are all okay because we feel all of these emotions just randomly. So you're not the only one who's had any negative emotions tied to these things. But when you do, those are the items to really look at a little bit more in depth and explore if they're still serving you or if they are covering up the things that truly make you happy. Then once you have assessed the area and what's making you happy with with organizing for grief and after loss, a lot of times we just simply need to mourn the fact that we are ready to take the next step. So it's okay to sit there for a moment and be sad and feel bad about the fact that you are ready to let go of some of these things because we need to feel all the feels in order to get them out there and to be honest with ourselves so that they those emotions can leave us as far as attaching to those things. So mourn the fact that you are moving on to the next step. And you know what? Feel guilty. It's okay to feel guilty. Everybody's afraid of guilt, but you don't need to be afraid of it. It's simply an emotion. As long as you don't let the guilt control you. Um, and we're going to go a little bit more into the guilt and that part of this process in, in the next one. But yeah, just really mourn it. Feel all the emotions. Um, don't let them hold you back, but truly, honestly feel them. And that's when it's really helpful to have somebody who's there with you too. Because sometimes you just need a moment. You just need to cry. Or sometimes you just need to take a brisk walk around the block to get some of it out. But really um, just be in that moment. Don't let it just pass you by and don't try to rush through it. And then keeping it simple. Keeping it simple as you're sorting through things, if it's a closet, for example, uh, the, the fewer categories that you sort into, the better. I like to keep it down to just three. Keep, go, and I don't know. 
Those are my three categories. And usually the I don't know means I'm gonna keep it and those are the ones that I'm gonna look at first next time. Because there will be a next time. This is, again, that whole onion, there's a layer of each, uh, that onion has one layer for each time you go through and purge things too. So it's that onion is just a rotten thing, but <laughs> there's layers and layers and layers, so this is not a one-time deal. So that I don't know, it's okay to have a large thing of I don't know. And you know what, at first, you are gonna have a ton of keep. You're gonna keep all the half-used shampoo bottles, you're gonna keep the empty gum wrapper, um, maybe the trash, the empty Gatorade bottle might hit the I don't know bin instead of even hitting the trash. And that's okay. At first, when it's really raw, most of it will be keep or I don't know, which is keep by default and look at for us next time. Um, and then as far as the keep, depending on where you're at in the process determines what you do with it. And further on in the fourth part of the series, we're going to talk really in depth about what to do with some of these things that we keep. But the goal is to, if it's early on in the process, it might just simply be boxing it up or leaving it where it is because it's been reviewed and it's okay where it is. And it's okay to have the clothes hanging in the closet for a long time. That's absolutely fine. And I'd love to hear from all of you, you know, if you've been through a loss, how long did you keep some things and did you box them up or did you kind of leave them where they are? Because there's, everybody does something a little different and it's, I love how fascinating it is and it's all correct. We all do it in a different way and it's all correct. So I'd love to hear from you either in the comments or send me a message afterwards and let me know how long you kept some of the things if you're further along in the process um, and whether you kept them boxed up or if you kept like clothes hanging in the closet. But feel free to leave it where it is or keep it boxed up. and. Um, the goal is eventually to honor it and display it and preserve it. So once you're down to some of those further in layers of that onion of sorting, that's when you're going to start making these decisions to actually do something with them. But at first, boxing them up is fine. And then finally, the last step is to repeat. Like I said, this is not a one-time, really quick, go through things and you're gonna be done. Whether it's three months, six months, a year out, you're gonna to have to do it again. And then you will be surprised how much you let go of and how much that you discover that you had either forgotten about or that you really truly cherish. And each time the awareness just grows. So each time you're just gonna keep repeating and repeat and repeat and repeat until you get down to that final goal which is the essence of who this person was in the world and to you. And that's our goal to get down to. We want to get rid of all of the stuff that's in the way and just see what's truly important to you as far as this person is concerned. And I would love to hear uh, if you've kept things from people who have passed, what things you kept. I know for me, I actually have a couple of things that are extremely important to me. One of which is I have my grandfather's old cane. It's not something he used. He never used it. And nobody would have known it was important to me at, because I was young at the time. But this is something that I saw every time that I went to my grandparents' house. So when he passed, it's something I related directly to my grandfather. And that cane was so important to me. And at first I kept so many things and that's the one thing that survived after all the purges and um, it's the most special because for some reason my little kid brain really connected with that one. So that's our goal is to get down to just those things that are truly the most important and then to honor them and either preserve them or display them. Those are the two things that we want to go forward with. So that is the process. Um, be true to yourself. This is your journey. Don't let anybody should or shouldn't you into anything and it's going to be a slow process and let it be a slow process. Listen to your heart. Make sure that you are always letting your heart guide you as you take each next step. If it feels too rushed, then it probably is. So you might want to take a smaller step. Um, and then feel everything as you go through it. Really be in that moment and don't be afraid to feel all of the things that come up because that's normal. 
to, while you make space for something new and redefine these roles in your life. And it's creating a whole new life, really, after this. And then the process. Assess your space. Mourn for the fact that you are now in this process of change and moving on to the next step. Uh, keep it simple with broad categories and then repeat and keep repeating until you hit that end goal. And then finally, after the process is done, celebrate. Celebrate the fact that you are where you are in the process and celebrate these new roles that you've defined and what life looks for you now, looks like for you now, because that's an important thing to embrace what the current reality is and to be grateful for certain aspects of it. There's definitely some parts that we're not going to be grateful for, but the many parts that we are. So really try to focus on that gratefulness and gratitude and enjoy the new space that you are creating after you've created it. So next week, we will talk more in depth about the process and those decision-making questions that go along with it and some of my tips and tricks to get through that process as painlessly as possible. Um, and then also please share this with friends and family. I absolutely love having these conversations with people and I would love for anybody who's interested to be able to access this series. There's only the four videos, so after October it's done. So share this with everyone. It will be posted on my page a couple minutes after we're done with the live. So you can quickly hit share and let anybody know who is interested. Also. I'd love to hear your comments and your thoughts in the comments at the bottom. Feel free to type a few things about what you thought about this, what you would like to hear in the future, anything that I did not cover or that you're wondering if I'm going to cover, and any of your own stories. I'd love to hear some of the answers to the questions that I asked, as well as where you are in the process right now. Who maybe, who did you lose and what important stories and things about them do you want to continue into this world and have the world know about them because that's so important that's actually going to be part of our third series video is going to be about sharing the stories and making sure to capture those stories and then if you want to join my newsletter I send out videos and my blog posts some coupons um, I try to keep it short sweet and useful but you can go to sparkorganizing.com and scroll all the way down to the bottom. In the black box at the bottom, there's a little sign up. And you can sign up for the newsletter to get, uh, it's just monthly right now, a monthly newsletter from me. And then, like I mentioned, my name is Susanna Kay. I am a professional organizer. I'm also a professional speaker. If you know any events that need a speaker, I would absolutely love to hear from them. So give them my phone number, pass them on to me. I'm always, I always enjoy sharing about productivity, organization, and in this case, also just moving forward in life after a loss. And you can find out more about me at sparkorganizing.com and the services, and also you can check out some of my courses on lynda.com. I look forward to seeing you next week. We have Every Wednesday in October will be this grief series. We also have tomorrow and every Thursday morning at 11 a.m. We have our productivity Facebook Lives. So tomorrow we're going to talk about bullet journals. This month is all about managing the to-do list and the different ways that you can do it. So tomorrow is about bullet journals. And then Tuesday evenings at 8 p.m. we talk about home organizing. And this month we're talking specifically about organizing with kids. So I hope that you can join me for some of those Facebook Lives as well. I look forward to seeing you very soon. I love you all very, very much. It's so good to see each of you. I'll see you tomorrow. Have a wonderful evening.